Imagine the condition of men as living in a sort of underground cavern with a long entrance open to the light. Here men have existed since childhood, fettered by the leg and the neck, so that they cannot move or turn their heads in any way and can only see in front of them. Higher up, some distance behind them, is the light of a burning fire, and between the fire and the prisoners is a path with a parapet on it, like the screen at a puppet show which conceals the performers while they display their puppets above it. I can picture it, he replied. Now behind the parapet imagine there are men carrying all kinds of objects, including figures of men and animals in stone and wood and various other materials which project above the parapet. Some of these people would be speaking, and some would be silent. This is a strange image you conjure up, he said, and those chained men are strange prisoners. No, they are just like us, I replied, for to begin with, do you think such prisoners would see anything of themselves or of one another, except for the shadows cast by the fire onto the wall of the cave facing them? How could they see more if their heads are prevented from turning? And they would see just as little of the objects being carried past, of course. Now, if they were able to talk to one another, surely they would suppose that in naming the shadows they saw, they were in fact naming the actual objects. Certainly. And if their prison had an echo from the wall facing them, when one of the passers-by behind them spoke, the prisoners would naturally assume this came from the shadow passing before their eyes. By Zeus, they would indeed, he said. In all ways, then, the prisoners would consider reality to be nothing else than the shadows of those artificial objects. Inevitably, he agreed. The Republic, Book 7, 514a to C.